Uh, hello and most welcome to Heidegger Turn 21 and I want to talk about the hand today. The hand uh, is connected to more neural cells than any part of our body except for the lips and the difference between human being our closest relatives on earth according to the evolutionists the chimpanzee is incredible our hand is just completely different and the hand is where we think all thinking started from tools we discussed that before it's something also heidegger is talking about he called tools zug affordances is another word everything we think about is things that are either in the world or are a combination that we do things in the world by holding by caring by doing things and uh, the development of the skills of the hand are just extensive it's just beyond belief just to make a simple tool from neolithic time it could take up to 10 years and that was neolithic time all our development is coming from our interaction with hands to the world and I think that is something that is largely forgotten today <clears throat> when you see you you think you've seen it all you I stumble about this book they say I say it's called uh, the most that matter in academic writing this is a short handbook how to sound academic. <laughs> I'm not joking. I was just completely shocked that there was such a book. And the praise is immense from different universities. The University of LA, University of Pittsburgh, College of the Holy Cross, Texas State University and the Paul University. How you object, how you argue, how you repeat yourself. Uh, with a little difference how you spice up your argument uh, state your own ideas as a response to others this is a handbook in sounding academic in writing and of course similar handbooks are bound to be there how to sound academic in talking I think this is something I didn't expect but it's out there already who brought uh, there was a couple of guys, Gerald Graf, Kathy Birkenstein, Russell Durst. Birkenstein, not uh, Wittgenstein. Birkenstein and also like the foot <clears throat> where it's called Birkenstock, I think it is. I don't think this is true. I think that we can actually literally learn, not just imitate a learned language. <clears throat> <laughs> the argument of the book is important. There are moves to academic writing and that knowledge of them can be generative. The template, template, so mal, the template format is a good way to teach and demystify the moves that matters. The whole book is about imitating intelligence, knowledge and understanding. The outer form of understanding that is and I think that was the last straw I don't need to argue anything more against universities and academic lecture I think this undermines all what hopes that remained on the other hand I have also good news people are still learning it hasn't ceased to exist in the Eastern Hemisphere more than ever people are learning by doing with a hand and this is may, might be the most advanced instrument although it looks pretty innocent as it is it's called a fude in Japanese and it's incredibly sensitive to pressure direction acceleration sequences and other things I would say this is probably the most advanced human artifact when it comes to interaction with the world nothing can beat that and this is with the hand that we learned 
Barbara Tversky showed us the path and we continue to go into that to understanding that it is the moves in the world we are doing that is thinking, is what we do with the world that is our thinking. Our thinking is not, like we mentioned before, a great interior. It is outside as well as inside. And by thinking it as I, this is ridicu ridiculous, but it's what people think. They think thinking is inside. And by thinking that, they reduce thinking to nothing. The same dissatisfaction that uh, people of the Puritan faith felt in uh, 16th century, 17th century England is the same lack of faith these people feel. They don't have any inner thinking. So they just imitate what comes out, which is like secondary, derived, and completely useless. They even, they even brag about that this is no use other than to gain points within academia. <laughs> it's, it's very honest. It's very honest. It is very honest. But by taking the outside, the affordances, then you also get the inside. This is what uh, Oliver Cromwell felt, he felt a complete lacking within himself, and that was furthered. When he started, he didn't feel that lack. His whole bio biography is down there, but it developed. And as he felt a greater and greater lack within, the more dissatisfied he became with life, with God, with religion, and also other people. He became cruel. He became a dictator in the end. He didn't start out as a dictator, but he became a dictator and he started to execute people. And of course the execution of Charles was uh, completely unjustified. And in the end he didn't feel that he had any choice, Cromwell, because of the lack of any feeling, of any godliness, of anything good. And of course this is a horrific place to be that these authors demonstrate. They are themselves there. They don't think there is knowledge in this universe. You can just imitate it. And what you need is templates, like models that you copy cut. Copy cut. The same you do uh, different programs on the internet. Uh, this is not true. We can still learn, and fractality shows that this is Heidegger's words. You can start to listen again. It is not gone. Hearing is possible still. Yes, you need to break up a lot of intuitions about reality, firmly established foundations. Yes, it will be hurtful. But you won't lose anything, trust me. <laughs> These people actually lost everything. This is the most scary book I ever read in my life. No monster novels could be as scary as this. This is the telling of Apocalypse. It's telling that there is no hope for humanity whatsoever. No wonder poor Ian McGilchrist is depressed. No wonder Stephen Rosen is also depressed. There's no wonder I would also be depressed. But the good news is there is no need for this depression. And the reason is it still continues in the majority of countries. They still train intelligence. And you do that by making the hand more sensitive. How we move, according to David Bradle, is also how we think. So if I handle something with care, if I take care of the took of the things I use in daily life, I will strengthen my capacity to hear, to see, to feel, to perceive, and to think. You gain both inner and outer at the same time. Whereas if you cut off the outer, you also lose completely the inner. And I would say the inner is the first you lose when you cut out the outer. This is just pure elegance. I'm going to give you some examples of what you can learn. You can learn fractality, sequences, 
and it's so advanced that in the end all you need and this is abstraction when it comes to the highest level all you need in the end is the sequencing so it goes beyond mere depiction of a sign and this is one one of those things I really struggle with in uh, in Japan when they uh, uh, left me a message maybe posted a uh, thing or a letter or something that was the toughest challenge because then they really white went into high level abstraction they just followed sequencing and therefore what they wrote didn't depict anything in it it just showed the sequences a higher form of thinking and also a very advanced way of writing it was absolutely stunningly beautiful as well but imagine the problem reading it for a westerner like me i had to give up all what similarity was and I had to know by heart in which order the things were supposed to be done. And the order was the only thing that remained. So you see what abstraction is. Abstraction is taking something and taking out the finer details, the good stuff. And that is not something you can make a template for. Because you need to do it yourself. You need to be the instrument. And this is your exterior instrument. This is exteriority as well as interiority at the very same time. And what I notice is when I write usually, and that's usually on a keyboard, I notice I have a tendency to fall together. But recently I managed to put in this rhythm uh, I explained before. the. Uh, the stimulator of the cerebellum. The stimulator of cerebellum makes me stop this uh, unguided thinking that the cerebellum just don't have a good rhythm and it slows down. And all, already at the keyboard I can feel when I do it at the same time as I write, I've managed to do that. It's just a couple of days ago I can do the rhythm right at the same time uh, yes in the beginning it would make my writing not as good uh, my thinking not as good and the rhyming not as good but this is the beginner state now I manage to do it as every time I do it henceforth I will enhance because now the rhythm can go on all the time and that's the finer detail and that's the key to unlocking the power of the cerebellum it's to have the rhythm going on all the time and in the beginning it's like a scary feeling you feel like why well, gonna lose it I can't keep up both doing something and having the rhythm going on but as you get acquainted a customized it gets easier easier and all of a sudden there is a sharpening of thinking and I start, started to think that uh, more and more I realized all of a sudden my thinking is sharper and I remember things this is a side effect I had no idea would come but at the same time I am working and letting the rhythm go I feel my sitting bones I take in the environment all those things that usually distracted me are now opening up the inside so I can reach and I can remember and all of a sudden I realize this is the way to go to the inside I thought earlier as more as I shut out the outside all disturbances will disappear and I can get more energy into what I'm doing it is just the opposite they are both helping each other and by focusing too much on the smaller details the smaller details cease to exist the finer the filigree of uh, the fern disappears and this is actually the same as i showed in the previous lecture uh, 1020 when i said that arguing against is 
indirectly putting the other person's explanation into a box, simplify it, making it less complex, less detailed, less deep and wide. So that's stopping understanding. But having the rhythm going on, that makes thinking being more open, sharper, intelligent. And this is of course something we train also in the West. In the West. Repetition, liturgy and all those things were training for the mind, for the soul. And it made people healthier, both body and soul. They were incredibly healthy in the monasteries before they took away the liturgy and the singing and the chant. And there was a disaster after that, body and soul. So you see, it's a healthy way and complexity is health in itself. Because not only do you get satisfaction from the things you're doing, your own thinking started to getting more satisfactory. It becomes clearer and it becomes a delight to think. And this swifting movements when you are in balance start to look beautiful. They acquired a quality-like character. And maybe in the beginning that quality is just aesthetics. But after a while you will notice it's a bit more than aesthetics. This is intelligence, this is thinking, this is directedness, and this is true understanding, not this. <laughs> Sorry, Officer Book, I think it, it was well meant, but it's a scary example of where we shouldn't go. I think that has to be enough for today. Thank you very much, and I wish you a very pleasant afternoon. Bye bye.